discrimination on the basis of race, color, sex. As a sexually dimorphic reproductive species, and by extension a society made up of that species, we innately care about the interests of women. And the civil rights movement, by almost nothing more than serendipitous political timing, were able to peripherally capitalise on that excess power for social and political change created by second wave feminism. I think the best analogy I've heard to explain this innate political power behind female interests comes from Barbarossa's seminal video series, Humanity First and Foremost. He opined that feminism was something akin to social thermite. You see, as a chemical compound once catalyzed, thermite is actually a self-sustaining reaction, so much so that it will even continue to burn in a vacuum because it contains its own oxidizing agent as part of its very chemical makeup. Likewise, feminism as a political movement for female interests is self-sustaining as well. It is a political movement with its own internal oxygen source. Female interests are the combustible fuel and our innate biological bias towards women acts as the oxygen source, which once catalyzed by the spark of industrialized labor and birth control will continue to burn with intense political heat ultimately unimpeded by other socioeconomic factors. Just as real thermite continues to burn in an atmospheric vacuum, so too does ideological feminism continue burning in a political or economic vacuum. GFC causes a massive downturn in manual labour markets, predominantly affecting men by a factor of almost four to one. Doesn't matter, stimulus package still goes to working women. I think examining feminism, or more broadly gynocentric politics, within the framework of what I'll call social thermite theory, makes a few aspects of the wider social justice movement much more clear. To start with, there's the long-standing and ubiquitous assumption about intersectional feminism, an assumption which I am now utterly convinced is incorrect. You know what I'm talking about because you've probably heard it said a hundred times or more. Feminism cannibalizes other movements. Feminism tries to infect other social movements in a desperate attempt to stay relevant. Well, not to put too fine of a point on it, but the interests of women are always going to be relevant. As with the downturn of the labor market during the GFC, women remain the primary recipients of financial and institutional aid in almost every area of life, regardless of whether there is any actual justification for this aid. Women now outnumber men in universities by a factor of almost two to one. However, all the quotas and affirmative action and mentor programs are still overwhelmingly aimed at improving the academic standing of women. Women are the least likely victims of violence, but all of these laws and campaigns are explicitly aimed at protecting women. Claims of employment discrimination, despite clear evidence of a two to one hiring bias in their favor, and I don't think we need to bring up the wage gap for the millionth time. Female welfare and women's interests always has been and always will be seen as inherently important. In a very real sense, we are biologically primed for feminism. We just needed the right environmental conditions, such as mechanized labor making women theoretically social equals to provide that combustible spark. Feminism really doesn't need to cannibalize other movements to continue getting its way in any of these areas. Based on what we've just explored with the black civil rights movement, I basically think we have this fundamental assumption about intersectional feminism's relationship to other social movements precisely ass backwards. Feminism isn't cannibalizing those other movements, it's the other way around. It's those other movements intentionally piggybacking off feminism because they need to tap into the political heat and energy created by the intense combustion of feminism's social thermite, that is, innate biological bias towards women. If they can somehow tap into that innate political power, then they may be able to get their own identitarian political agendas across the line. I guess in the metaphorical sense, 
Just as Walter White used thermite to cut through an impenetrable steel door in Breaking Bad, identitarian minority movements like black civil rights can use the social thermite of feminism to cut through otherwise impenetrable social or biological barriers such as exclusionary racial bias. And as with the black civil rights movement, I think we see the same progression present in other social movements that have become intrinsically intertwined with feminism. Feminism did not